Our guests tonight, Moonlight in the worlds of music, woodworking, and smoking-related ceramics. They've joined forces to tell the true story about GameStop stock called Dumb Money. Yes? What? Hello? Hi, it's Ken Griffin. Hi there, Ken. How are you? Great to hear from you. Do you have a minute? I, uh... Um, I gotta call you right back, if that's okay. I'm so sorry. Sure. Okay, great. Hi. What's happening right now? It looks like there's one guy driving all the buying. What, what, what guy? I believe his name is Roaring Kitty. Dumb Money is in theaters and on digital now. Please welcome Paul Dano, Nick Offerman, and Seth Rogen. Is this a, a birthday gift for me? I, I heard it was your birthday. Uh -huh. I sort of assumed these guys might bring you something. They didn't, but uh -huh, uh, uh -huh. I, I didn't want to show up empty-handed, so. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. That, and you didn't happen to get this from your hotel room, did you? Uh, it's, the, it's the thought that counts. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get you anything, so. <laughs> well, thank you. Uh, my, my, you know what? My scale will reprimand me for that tomorrow morning. <laughs> but I appreciate it. How are you guys doing? Very well, thank you. Very uh, Paul, Paul said that that could be from us. It could, oh, he said that it could be from you, and then he took full credit for it, when, <laughs> which in fact he does deserve, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nick, you, you, you knew it was Jimmy's birthday from our briefing. I, I did, um, but I ran out of time. We, uh, we talked about crafting a custom paddle and getting into a whole spanking scenario. Uh -huh, uh -huh. <laughs> The strike just ended. We're just, you know, let's let's keep this loving. Maybe next year. Yeah. Next year, that would be nice. How well do you guys know each other? I know them both uh, uh, pretty well. Um, Nick and I have never met in the flesh. They met in the hallway, Lovely literally, meeting. right before this. Yeah, Big fan of his. I, so people are laughing, but I, really I nice. was wondering about that because in the movie, you guys play, you know, you have kind of a different world that you're in, and you don't have scenes together. Yeah, we, we, all, we all shot at separate times. I'm a huge fan of his. Seth and I worked together last year on Steven Spielberg's film, The Fablemans. Oh, right, that's right. pretty cool. Yeah. 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 A lot and of fable heads in the crowd tonight. When, 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 we, when we got the job, Seth texted me yeah. saying this is so exciting that we get to work together. And I said, yeah, until you f my wife. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I, with the, I hadn't read the script. I had only been offered the role, so I was really confused, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> But then I was relieved. <laughs> <laughs> and then you guys, Seth and Nick, worked together in the Pam and Tommy uh, deal, yes, right? Yes, also from Craig Gillespie, who directed... Who this, directed this very this film. beautiful piece Interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, and how's it going? Are you guys, are the two of you liking each other? I mean, it seems like you've gotten off to a fairly strong What's start. What's not to like? It seems... Uh, <laughs> I mean, my goodness, yeah. <laughs> seems pretty amicable so far. <laughs> By the way, I learned a lot watching this movie because I knew about that whole GameStop thing. I'd read about... I didn't... I never really bothered to get into the details of what was going on. And it's such an interesting story. It's also so weird to make a movie that uh, about real events that happened, like, two years ago. I mean, it's rare that people turn things around that quickly, you know? <laughs> and yeah. and it, was this a story you guys were personally following when it was happening? I, I, yeah. was a, no. I was no. only, I was aware of it, but I, but I, I didn't know. I, I don't get granular when it comes to my own investment portfolio. Uh, you don't. No. No, I'm more. I, I invest in chisels and hand tools. Uh -huh. <laughs> Have they appreciated in value? Very you, well? damn right they. Nice. <laughs> When it comes to hand tools, you get what you pay for, and that means good steel. 
do you are you an investor? Are you a guy who plays the stock market? No, no, no. I hate I hate I hate losing money. I, I would have to know a lot. Of, I would have to study it. I would have to get really into it. I can't even play poker with friends. I don't want to know anything to do with losing money. Uh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> How about you, Seth? Uh, no, I'm not great with uh, investment uh, in general in my life. Um, when I was 13, I had my bar mitzvah, and I took all the money and bought uh, hallucinogenic mushrooms with them. <laughs> and then, uh, and then uh, I, I, all my friends uh, wrote in my yearbook. Uh, I got them the day school ended. That was right when my bar mitzvah was. All my friends wrote my yearbook. Hey, we're so psyched to eat all those shrooms you just got. <laughs> and then my parents read my yearbook and were like, what the f is everyone talking about? <laughs> And I was like, oh, that's just a joke. And then they looked at my backpack where there was uh, several ounces of mushrooms, and then they uh, took them and threw them in the garbage. Oh, so, wow. Uh, so that was a poor investment, <laughs> I guess I would say, uh, ultimately, on my part. But if it went well, I would be a shroom magnate. Right uh -huh. now. Yeah. And, uh, You're dressed like a shroom magnate right now. I kind of right am now. dressed like a shroom magnate. That's what I showed my stylist, shroom <laughs> magnate. That was <laughs> So did you guys know, like, Paul, you, did you, you didn't get to meet this guy. The, the movie is, the, the center of the film is this guy named Keith Gill who would go on this Reddit page and he would talk about this GameStop stock. And it's a complicated thing, and I won't get into all the details of it, but Reddit rose up to kind of defeat the man and to support these little... You know, game video game stores that are in the mall. Yeah, yeah. My guy, Roaring Kitty. Roaring uh, Kitty was Roaring his name. Kitty. His God-given name, Roaring Kitty. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, no, I didn't. I didn't. I really wanted to meet him. He he had to sort of disappear. I felt like he was like a samurai who walked off into the distance and didn't want to be found. And I didn't want to go stand outside his house like a creep. So I just sort of. Uh, in fact, after reading the script, which was wonderful, I looked at just one YouTube video of his, and I was like, okay. It would be so good for me to spend time with that guy, so to speak. Like his energy was so positive and honest, and he was one of those people who's just like able to be like, "This is me. Like I'm wearing a cat shirt and a bandana, and like, what's up? You know, where, where I, 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 I don't think I'd be able to do that. I'd be too nervous about what, what, what Jimmy Kimmel might think of me. Right? Yeah, yeah. You know, in a cat shirt. Yeah. So. No, you shouldn't come here in a cat shirt. It's just not something anyone should do. <laughs> But it is, you're right, though, people who are either comfortable or oblivious enough to wear a shirt with kitten on it um, are, I guess, to be admired? I, I think so. It felt powerful to me. And I was like, yeah, I, I could, this would be good for Paul to spend some time in the kitty corner. And then Seth and Nick, you play a couple of uh, out of touch billionaires, which yeah. is indeed what you are in real life. In real life, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It took no research whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. did you, you didn't meet those guys, did you? No, no not, not at all. Those guys no. can't be happy about this, right? No, um, uh, my, my guy um, <laughs> was, was publicly vocal about saying that the film was full of falsehoods and fabrications. He, he made a stink about it. And we discovered that he actually hadn't seen the movie. Um, <laughs> and I think we, and we did a lot of research. We vetted it. Most of what I do is based on uh, <laughs> actual <laughs> re reciting what he said in court, which they, they make a document of, you know? Right. And he, I think he's mad that we said what he said in public. Yeah, you can't say like, what someone guys, says. <laughs> isn't, that, isn't that defamation? Like, we should, yeah, but we, I think he's uh, backed off now. OK, all right. Because of how handsome you are. We base the film on right. facts. Yeah. yeah, right, yeah. When you do that, it really trips people off, doesn't it? Well, we're going to take a break, um, and uh, we're going to see another clip from a movie in a little while. Uh, Paul Dato, Nick Offerman, and Seth Rogen are here. Dumb Money is the movie. We'll be right back. Hey, do, you, do you remember back at Stonehill when they dared me to run that mile naked? Yeah, there was a crazy storm that night. Everybody remembers that. OK. Me too, man. You don't think people remember your four-minute, three-second mile? Oh, what is this, a pep talk? No, stop hiding. Seriously, OK? Stop being all meek and running away. What, you want me to run through lightning with my out? Yeah. Please. Exactly that. Run through lightning with your out. There's Paul Dano and Pete Davidson, Nick Offerman, and Seth Rogen. The movie is called Dumb Money. You and uh, Pete play brothers in the uh, in the film. Was it, did you guys have fun together? I loved Pete. I loved Pete. I felt like I was uh, coming out of a baked car at 16 years old and just giggling and laughing. I've never yeah. broken that much on camera. 
I never laughed so hard off set. I mean, the stuff is just like an open channel, the stuff that would come out. It's of kind of now. funny when you have a movie that Seth Rogen is in and Pete Davidson is like the biggest stoner in the <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's getting quite... old, man. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> in one scene, you guys, um, I hope, I don't think I'm ruining anything, but you get naked and you run. Yeah, yeah. yeah it go, 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 goes with the clip. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So our director, Craig Gillespie, came up to us on set one day. He's like, you know, these guys, these brothers in real life, they, they ran this, this naked mile, and Pete was like, you want <laughs> I'm your guy. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, Oh, okay, and I was like, I, I feel like Pete, uh, Pete, Pete said yes. I have, to, I have to say yes. So yeah, yeah, right. Oh, you were bullied into it in a way, like brothers would do. Is there a way to prepare for a, a nude scene, or you just have to go with it? It was late October in Jersey. Oh boy, you just have to, you just have to accept. Uh huh. You have to accept the situation. The consequences. Yeah. We had to change in a high school locker room. I was sure some kind of fungus was. I was going to take home some kind of fungus. Sure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The football locker room. Uh, it actually turn, turned out to be really fun, though. It's freeing, isn't it, to suddenly it be naked? Well, you guys, yeah. I'm imagining you both naked, and I don't just think that's in my head. I think I'm remembering both of you doing nude stuff, yeah? I get that from a lot of talk shows. Yeah, you do? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was no, in Chicago theater. I was known as, if you need a guy to get naked, uh, call Offerman. Um, <laughs> And my first play I did in Los Angeles was on a thrust stage, a Mike Lee play, and the, the lights come up at the top of the show, and I'm down center, naked, and I, I guzzle two cans of Guinness to start the show. And opening night, the lights come up, I drink my Guinness, and two little old ladies in the front row, one says to the other, I have to get my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you can hear in the silent theater. And I said, it's about breadth, lady. <laughs> Seth, how about you? Oh, I've been naked many times on camera. Yeah? Um, to, uh, yeah, mostly a comedic effect, I guess. Um, I, uh, I, I, the worst one, I, I, was, I made a movie called uh, The Interview um, that I... Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You don't have to. You know. <laughs> it almost started Be like careful. a nuclear holocaust, so you don't have to cover that. But uh, yeah, so there's a scene in the film where I've shoved a rocket up my uh, ass, and um, I get, uh, and I'm concealing it from North Korean guards, and I get stripped down by the guards, and they have a German shepherd who's supposed to. The joke is that the German Shepherd is like smelling me and it smells my ass because that's where the rocket is hidden. And so we're there filming and there's uh, the dog handler and the guy from PETA, the people for the ethical treatment of animals is there. Um, so you can get that thing on the end of the movie that no animals were harmed. Yeah. And so the dog, God bless it, is barking and doing all this stuff, but it just won't smell my ass. It just, <laughs> for whatever reason, does not want to smell my ass. Which is insane. Uh, and so um, we keep talking to the trainer. How do we get it to smell my ass? What, is there anything we could do? The trainer's pointing at my ass. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Uh, the dog will not smell my ass. And the, the, the trainer keeps giving the dog, when it performs well, little, like, jerky treats, like little, like, beef jerky treats. And so me and uh, Evan, my uh, co-director, are looking at these beef jerky treats, and Evan's like, I think I know how to get the dog to smell your ass. <laughs> And so I end up shoving uh, beef jerky in my ass. <laughs> um, and it works. The dog is sniffing my ass. The dog yeah. is uh, the dog's doing it. And, and, and we get a few takes of it. And I go back behind the camera. And the guy from PETA is like standing there like this. <laughs> and I go to him. And I'm like, this isn't like mistreating the dog, right? Like the dog isn't going to be upset by this. And he was like, the dog doesn't care. <laughs> I can't believe you are doing this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, they were looking out for you. <laughs> what, you give up shoulders? Give up shoulders, yeah. I got worms also from the dog, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I had a cone for three weeks after. <laughs> the important thing is, after all that, no one got to see that exactly. movie. Exactly, and at least after that, the movie was shelved. <laughs> <laughs> so um, uh, a lot of this movie that you guys are in takes place um, on social media. I mean, Seth, you, you are, you, Nick, you are also, are you Paul on social media? No, I'm not. It was, I, I, I created some fake accounts, though, to, to get in touch with oh, did. With the young people. Can you say uh, what they are? For this. <laughs> no. No. Oh. <laughs> no. no, definitely not. That's, that's really, yeah, that, that, that's not something I want in my life. Um, yeah. I went on 
TikTok and, and I was sent a video about how oat milk isn't good for you and I, I wanted to be done with TikTok because I drink oat milk every day and I didn't, didn't need to know that. <laughs> and, uh, and some of the others, but it reminded me, um, you know, of, of uh, A.O. Winston's message. Right? Oh, yeah, right. Starting out and when I was, you know, young and in touch. Yeah, yeah. Um, what was your screen name on AOL Instant Messenger? You remember that? Can you say that? Yeah, it was, it was, that's, I just want uh, to give the disclaimer, it was middle school. Okay. <laughs> but me and all my friends decided to, to make our first screen names and, and end them with 40 OZ, like 40 ounces. 40 ounces, As yeah. if us 12-year-olds drank, yeah. drank 40 ounces. So that's dope. That's I think mine was, yeah, <laughs> peanut 40 OZ and... My friend was Peanuts cell dog, 40 OZ, I mean, and... That's inarguably of, badass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Nick, what was yours? Do you remember? Did you have one? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, there was some... There was sort of... Uh, again, it was ad very adolescent. I was also in middle school in the <laughs> early aughts. Um, it, had, it had the words donkey punch. Um, donkey punch... 40 OZ. And 40 OZ. <laughs> Seth, did you go through that? Did you have that deal where you were? Somewhere? We don't have AOL in Canada. I'm oh, Canadian. Do you have COL? Well, we have COL Canadian <laughs> online. Uh, no, I actually joined the internet pretty late. It was actually we were uh, we were making the movie The Green Hornet, and uh, that's actually around when I joined the internet. No and, way. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, and joined the internet. That's how. <laughs> That's what you do, right? You join the internet. And uh, the reason me and Evan, my, get my, my, my writing partner, uh, we would go on IMDb and on the message boards, there was all these like nerds who were really mad that we were making the Green Hornet. And so we, we, we would go on the message boards and argue with them and be like, screw you, nerd. And then, but, but we didn't realize that we were actually just using our actual names. <laughs> And then someone from Sony was like, are you arguing with nerds on the IMDb message boards? And we're like, how did you know that? And they're like, it literally says Seth Rogen. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> we'll be right back with uh, Paul, Nick, and Seth. <laughs> we are back with Paul Dano, Nick Offerman, and Seth Rogen, the cast of Dumb Money, which is the story of the GameStop stock. And if you were confused by it, as I was while it was happening, it explains the whole thing quite beautifully, yes. And do you guys, now you worked with this director, Craig Gillespie, before you'd not worked with no. Craig. You guys had, nobody has to audition, you don't have to audition anymore for things, right? Um, generally, no, uh, yeah. especially no. When, yeah. when, when you get the breakdown, when, when they're casting something, it often says a Seth Rogen type. Uh -huh. <laughs> a, a mushroom tycoon. Exactly. Um, <laughs> who wears velvet and jewel tones. <laughs> And they're yeah. like, well, should we get Seth? And they're like, let's go. No. They're like, ask Pete Davidson if he's available. <laughs> he's younger now. <laughs> is it helpful to know, like, your co-stars before going in? Do you find that is a shortcut? Or it, it, it can be actually, like, I actually find it sometimes harder to act with people I know very well. Because acting, I find to be embarrassing sometimes. Because mm -hmm. you're... Because it, it's silly. You're pretending, you know, you're make, it, you're pretending. And so, uh, yeah, one time, actually, uh, I auditioned for the film Eight Mile, the Eminem film. You did? Yes, I did. For, uh, and, and, my, and I was really good friends, and I still am, with Jason Siegel, another actor. And we both had auditions for Eight Mile. And the casting director didn't feel comfortable reading. It was a part opposite Eminem, and she didn't want to read the Eminem role. And so she was like, bring in an actor to read the Eminem role with. You, she told you to She bring told, it? it was incumbent on the auditioner <laughs> to bring in a scene partner, <laughs> which is weird. Yeah. And so me and Jason both had auditions for this role, Rabbit. That was the role, Rabbit. Uh, no, Rabbit's Eminem. Rabbit's Eminem. It, was, Eminem, uh, it yeah. was the other. Uh, honestly, Cheese. His name was Cheese. Um, right. So <laughs> Cheddar, right? Cheddar. That Cheddar. was it. Yeah. Cheddar. <laughs> How do you, when's the last time you saw <laughs> this was before you joined the internet? <laughs> exactly. This was before I joined the internet. I was invited to join. Uh, uh, so yeah, uh, I'm auditioning for Cheddar, um, and Jason Siegel's also auditioning for Cheddar, and so we're like, can we just go in together? And he'll read for me, he'll be Rabbit, and I'll be Cheddar, and then we'll switch, and I'll be Rabbit, and he'll be Cheddar. And they said yes. 
And then we go in there to get, we had a sleepover at my house that night. <laughs> and, and we practiced all, we ran our lines. And when you're alone, it's different. And then, and then we got there and uh, the, the, the casting director was like, action. And the first line is me being like, Yo, 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 let me show you my demo. It's at Paisley Park. And I said it and just started laughing hysterically. And Jason started laughing hysterically. And we both laughed until we cried. And then we're both just asked to leave. <laughs> yeah. At least wow. you got a sleepover out of it. Yeah. Nick, what did you do over the strike? Did you have any any fun hobbies slash activities? No, I mean I have I have a wood shop here in Los Angeles. I know that, yeah. Uh, so we we made you made that desk. <laughs> I made this desk and then we put it in the Sky Mall catalog. Oh really? Is it now? It's available, available in oak, mahogany, and walnut. Oh great! Um, well, maybe we'll get some different wood tones. I actually toured. I tour as a humorist. Right. I toured around uh, the country in the UK and Ireland, singing songs for audiences. My newest song is called Eaten. And it's, um, it's, I think we, I think eat brings you from humorist to comedian. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I also I wrote a new song about uh, that that HBO show I did called The Last of Us. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. You were great on that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I wa wasn't going for that. I got a lot of homophobic hate actually directed at me also. So I wrote a song called uh, I Thought I Was a Man But I Was Wrong, and I wrote and uh, when people ask me why do you say you're I thought you were gonna say that was eat. But no. yeah. <laughs> when people say, why do you say you're a humorist, it's because I don't write jokes. I see. But I wrote a joke about The Last of Us, and I say I'm very lucky that I got this role because they needed a guy who could use a shovel. And there are only three of us in Hollywood. Uh, Harrison Ford passed, and Jane Lynch was not available. <laughs> <laughs> it took me two months to write that joke. And Paul, you wrote a, a comic book, right? Like a whole comic book series over there. I wrote a comic book that's coming out soon in November about, I like, play this character, the Riddler, in the Batman film. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Um, and yeah, I, I, I took my backstory and, and made it into a six issue comic. It was kind of a dream come true, you know, some little kid in me. Were you guys. that into the Riddler beforehand, or is just embodying that character is what got you all Riddler uh, yeah, crazy? I, I always, uh, like, will do the work, like, what gets me to page one, right, uh -huh. in the script, uh, so you kind of carry the life with you and your body and your voice and everything. So I just expanded my backstory into a comic. I secretly thought it could be a comic. I tried to imbue my, like, backstory with sort of the archetypal energy of a comic, and then I told our director, Matt Reeves, about it, and he was like, that should be a comic. And I was secretly like, yeah, I think it could be. And then it, then it actually came through. And when so will it awesome. come out? That's awesome. Uh, November 21st, I think. And so. is it called The Riddler? It's called Riddler Year One. Oh, Ooh. Riddler Year One. There you go. Look at you guys. Thanks. Keeping busy. Thank you for coming. It's great to have you. Go see the movie. It's called Dumb Money. It's in the movie theaters. And also, you can get it on digital now. Paul Dano, Nick Offerman, and Seth Rogen will be back with two chains and